What's up and welcome back. I'm John Stark from ActiveMovieGuy.com, your favorite blind film critic. And today, we're going to talk about Shark Tale. The 20th anniversary of Shark Tale. So click that like and subscribe button. Um, this was on Netflix. I think it might still be on Netflix. It wasn't leaving. It wasn't listed as leaving when I watched it. So might still be there. Um, and it does have audio description. So... That's great. That's part of the reason I chose to celebrate its anniversary. And in case you're like, what is Shark Tale, really? I mean, of all the movies you picked, man, Shark Tale? Yep. Came out in 2004, made about $161 million at the box office. Uh, it's sort of like a, a hit. It's very odd that there's no sequel to this, uh, considering everything else that it's kind of gotten a sequel there are definitely films that have grossed less than this that have gone on to get sequels. Notably, we just got a sequel to Chicken Run last year. Uh, granted, it was at Netflix, but, they, you know, um, that movie made just a little over $100 million. So about uh, 50 to 60 less than, um, than this. So maybe this is destined for a legacy sequel. I don't know. But it's got a great cast. Uh, we've got Will Smith, uh, Jack Black, Robert De Niro, Renee Zellweger, Angelina Jolie, Martin Scorsese in the voice cast, uh, Michael Imperioli, uh, Peter Falk. Uh, we've got, uh, yeah, it's just, I think those are kind of all the main characters. But I think Ziggy Marley and Dougie Doug also play the the jellyfish. Um, and it's, it's solid, you know, uh, it's not a bad animated film. It just isn't the kind of film that you go, oh my God, it changed my life. What's your favorite animated film? Shark Tale is my favorite animated film of all time. It's, it's kind of just like popcorn entertainment animation for kids. It's not necessarily gunning for that animated feature trophy, but it's just gunning to sort of appeal to everybody uh, and really lean in on the voice talent that it has gr gone out and paid for. You know, when you pay for an, uh, a, a cast like this, you really want to make sure that you get your money's worth. And I think, I think everybody delivers. I think that's what kind of makes it entertaining. Will Smith has, like, full energy here. Um, he's playing our lead little, uh, tiny little fish who uh, is... I, I don't, I don't know, I don't know fish, you know, I mean, I'm sure like in, there are people like if I, if I teamed up with a marine biologist, this would be like the most interesting review because they'd, they'd be like, oh, well, that, that that's the kind of fish and they go in the ocean and they, he's, he has this and, and really they're, the kind of behavior that they have in this film is not unlike the, I have no idea. He's a tiny fish and he works at a car wash for fish. So basically whales come in in car wash form. And he's part of the team that cleans them. Uh, he works with Ange, played by Renee Zellweger, who is a fish that is just super crushing on him hard. Um, and when uh, when he gets into a tough spot, uh, she helps him out by giving him this like precious heirloom thing of hers um, because she believes in him. But then Oscar just goes and blows it because that's the kind of movie this is. That's the kind of winning character Oscar is, is, you know. Um, but uh, against that, we also have sort of a, the sharks are like the mafia. And, uh, they, you, you know, they just kind of believe they can eat anybody whenever they want because, like, they control everything. And the boss of the car wash is this puffer fish that's voiced by Martin Scorsese. And we see that he's in a little bit of a tight bind in terms of uh, his standing with the sharks and uh, of course they're not going to eat him because he's a puffer fish so that would suck but uh, I'm pretty certain sharks don't eat puffer fishes or they, if they do they die because they're poisonous um, but uh, at, at least some of them are I don't know maybe this is why I need a marine biologist on call for these kinds of reviews so that I don't make bold statements like puffer fish and then like I get an email from like the pufferfish organization that's like no that that is 
that is a stereotype against pufferfish that we need to have broken. The pufferfish are not poisonous. It's actually this other kind of fish that's really similar to the pufferfish, and they're giving them a bad rap. That's what this is. But, yeah, whatever. It's a kid's film. And uh, when, when do you get Marty, Marty Scorsese in here? You know, I mean, like, that's amazing. You know, I love that somebody even did thought to ask him in the first place. They're like, we're making a movie. Who'd be great for this? Not Martin Scorsese. I'm like, he's a director. No, I mean, yeah, but what about Martin Scorsese? <laughs> like, why not? <laughs> you know, um, so uh, De Niro's the, the, the crime boss and he's got his two kids played by Jack Black and Michael Imperioli. Uh, one of them is obviously far more suited for this life than the other. The other one is like a vegetarian, but doesn't want to tell his father and is trying to hide that he doesn't really want to eat things that are alive. And uh, they eventually, Jack Black and Will Smith end up in a situation where uh, they can help each other mutually beneficially because Oscar needs to kind of uh, be seen in a different light, and uh, so does uh, Jack Black's character at the same time. So, and the film kind of spirals from there. We've got Lola, who's playing sort of like the gold digging, like side hustle that comes in on Oscar when we know that really Oscar should end up with Ange. So, not really like the villain of the story, but also that weird female character that sometimes you're like mm, you're not the right one for our character sorry you're the character that comes along when they're only successful and they've already got a boo that's back there behind them that's been supporting them when they had nothing and were kind of annoying so you need to go away now sorry lola um it's cute it's fine it's sort of like inconsequential to celebrate his 20th anniversary is like sort of acknowledging that it's its existence and kind of wondering, are kids still watching Shark Tale? You know? And I think, because uh, it's a question I like to pose in these anniversary reviews I've been doing, is are the kids watching these movies? And I don't know. Uh, it, it, because it didn't become a franchise, because there isn't like a, a merchandising angle here. They're not constantly seeing the minions everywhere around them. I don't actually know the answer to that uh, because it's one of those, it's not necessarily a film where I think parents are like, oh my God, I have to make sure that my kids watch Shark Tale. But if it's getting coverage and it's on Netflix, uh, it's professionally animated in a way that looks quality. It's got the kind of voice cast that your kids are going to like hear or recommend and be like, oh, that's Poe. We just saw Kung Fu Panda 4, you know? So I don't know. You know, uh, it also feels like the kind of film that could slowly disappear and maybe it's hot now and maybe it's still beloved for a little while until people kind of forget about it. I would say like for the 90s, uh, sort of celebrating uh, maybe a 10, 10 year longer review would be like Thumbelina, which I think people talked about for a while and then it kind of faded away. And I don't think I don't really hear people going, oh, my God, I make sure my kids watch Thumbelina all the time and they love it. Um, I think of the 90s films, we have some that are starting to slip, uh, that weren't quite up there. I don't know how many people are still watching The Swan Princess, or making their kids watch The Swan Princess, in that sort of, like, 30 age range, uh, 30 year anniversary age range. So, uh, it, it's, it's hard to say if this is going to continue to stand the test of time, and part of that has to do with the lack of sequel uh, lack, lack of franchise, franchise movement here. But uh, the audio description I thought was fine. It, I wasn't, like, thrilled, mainly because I've seen Shark Tale. I want to say I own this on DVD, but, like, maybe not. <laughs> I think it's one of those questionable ones. Uh, I definitely saw this in theaters. I've definitely seen this at least once, maybe twice. Uh, and I do remember it being very colorful, there were some things in the audio description that uh, were brought up, and I was like, oh my god, I didn't even... Because sometimes when you watch the film for the first time through, you don't catch everything. And they point out there's like a sushi uh, place, and I'm like, in underwater? That's 
that's cannibalism for these fish. And they're like complaining about the sharks. And I'm like, but if you eat sushi, you're eating other fish. So even if they're trying to like set the sharks apart as being like, the, oh, the sharks are bad because they eat us. It's like, you guys have a sushi restaurant. Where do you think that comes from? You know, like, um, huh. Let's, let's pause on that. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure somebody thought it was a cute gag, but then when you really think about it, you're like, uh, so, uh, there were some times where I thought maybe like we could have supported what was happening on screen a little bit more than what was being supported. But for the most part, I think it's, it's lively, energetic. It's got nice music to it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's fun, it's light, it's whatever. I don't know the fact that it has, I would say, average to above average. I don't want to say it has bad audio description because I don't think there was anything bad. I just, uh, it's one of those things where it's like, could we take another pass at it? Probably. Um, is this probably enough? Sure. I don't know that it's going to necessarily endear people who have never seen the film before to these characters, but at the same time, this is also not a film that's been merchandised, so I don't know that there are that many people that are like, I feel like I don't really know who Oscar is. I mean, great. Uh, yeah, we should, but at the same time, I don't think there are as many kids who are blind kids who would be really as interested when they keep hearing their friends talk about minions, you know, which is much harder to do. It's to try to describe the difference between all of those minions, you know, even the ones that have more feature time, uh, because they all kind of look exactly the same, but yet kids, when they have visual reference, really can develop that sort of recognizable and be like, oh, that's the one that wears uh, the, the overalls and has one eye and, uh, you know, the, like, you can kind of come up with little uh, t tells for that that are really hard to sort of break it down, stop in the middle of the film and be like, this is so-and-so, and the difference between him and the other minions is this. <laughs> you know? Um, we could have more of that here, but uh, and more with the, this, the description of the fish and more of like how they stand out from each other, but, uh, and some of the action sequences and stuff is, is yeah. Uh, I'm not gonna, like, uh, but at the same time, um, that's just because I've seen this film before and I'm like, I think this film has more to it. It's just co colorful, brighter. It's pulsating. Uh, it's, it's fluff. It's Rio is fluff also. Rio is another film that uh, knows that its thing is to just entertain and it's not trying to do anything more than that. It's not trying to have like a deep connection with you emotionally. It's coming in, it's got some hot music. It's got a great voice cast. That's the same thing here. Although Rio got a sequel. Um, so yeah, if you want to watch Shark Tale 20 years later, great. If you don't want, if you don't want to bother showing it to your kids, I think they'll be fine. Um, it's fine if they do, if you do, it's, you know, sometimes you need fresh things. Sometimes you're tired of hearing the same thing over and over and over and over. And you're like, oh my God, guys, there's a new movie on Netflix. It's called Shark Tale. <laughs> Look at that. We haven't seen that yet. Why don't we watch that? <laughs> So, um, maybe that is, this is that for you. So, I'm gonna give Shark Tale a B minus. Uh, I feel like that's probably about where it is. I, I don't think it's a bad movie, but I also, I think it's fine. I just, yeah, it's definitely not like a, an epic of grand proportions. I'm kind of just surprised because of the way Hollywood works that uh, it doesn't have a sequel, but I also don't think it needs one. I just, I see them all the time giving sequels to other things that don't need sequels. So it's really just interesting that they restrained themselves here and they were like, mm, not this one. No one shall touch Shark Tale. We shall not monetize this. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And I will see you guys on the other side.